I think we can safely say that because of the restrictions in the speed of the track for this move, and because the customer is asking us to run the move at least approximately at the speed he wants it, then we would have to change something else in the move in order to be able to achieve the speed required. So the most obvious thing to do is to use less track. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to change my master axis back to a track master. This means that the track will not move as part of the move that I import and I may need to actually add a track movement in order to be to achieve the movement I need. So here we go again. We're going back to our original move. The next time I import this will revert to the original speed, this part. So here we go. I'm going to import again. I'm going to keep these offsets that I had because those at least managed to bring the move within the reach of the rig. Importing again. There we are. Again, here we have the move, but here we have the arm being defined by where the move is. Now, if we look at this, we find that the track is sitting at zero. And if I try to go to the start position there, it's beyond my reach. And if I try to run the move, this is the rig failing to reach the position I need. So it looks like what I need to do is add some track positions and possibly a track move in order to obtain this movement. Let's put a meter forward on the track there. And it only needs to happen for the first section of the move. And the move back starts there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 100 there so the track sits in position for the first part of the move and then does a move back to the zero position at the end. Let's have a look at that. <coughs> now we go to our start position and I am within reach of the position of the move and I can actually reach that and my arm has adjusted itself accordingly. So let's run that move, see if that works. I still have a problem there in the middle of the move. Let's just slide that to that position there where the track is staying at one, hundred, at one meter and the arm is having a great deal of trouble reaching that point. In fact, I have the capability there to move the track forward that way. So maybe instead of using 100 and 0, I should use 130 there, 130 there, and 30. Let's see what that does. Again, I can reach the move. And it's very interesting because although I could reach the start and end of that, that movement, in the middle of the movement, it gave me an error where the arm straightened right out. 
So possibly I need to make the change, which occurs there, at a later position. Let's make it there instead. I could, of course, re-import with a different granularity, but I don't think I need to. I think I can get away with doing this. Let's view that with our rig model again. And that does the move very nicely. But does it do it fast enough? We may have a similar problem again when we come to actually running that move. This is now an imported move that we can reach. We don't have to put any other positions into our rig. We are not exceeding position in any, play, in any way. Let's try running that. Track, rotate, arm and pan are all slightly too fast. But the area that they are slightly too fast, the fastest being the rotate, is in this last part here. So again, we're meeting the problem of this last part is actually restricting the speed of the total move. If we accepted this fastest move would be 222 frames and rescaled, the whole move would be slowed down. Whereas actually, we only need to slow down this part. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to again scale my move. Not scale, sorry. I'm going to stretch my move from 13 to 16 and make that last waypoint 180. I wonder if that will now run. That will now run. So I could now run this on my machine successfully without actually hitting anything, without tripping my axes, without meeting any limit or speed limit on having my, my machine fail to achieve it. Admittedly, the customer may not be happy with this speed here, but we have to look here at the fact that the person who generated the move may not know the restrictions of your machine. The person who generated the move may not have been given a model of your machine or a kinematics file of your machine with speeds involved so that he could only create a move that you he knew you could do. The reason we're doing this is because you have clients who may give you moves that you need to be able to say to him, yes, I can run that. No, I can't run that. We've gone through various imports in order to modify the move slightly in position and slightly in speed in order to be able to achieve the move that he can do. If you had already software like IK Tricks running on Maya, whereby you could put master axes in place in order to pre-visualize the move before importing it to Flare, then you would be one step ahead. There will be a another program being created by Mark Roberts, which will also do a similar thing should you not have IK tricks available to you. This will be available fairly soon. Thank you very much.